hello and welcome this is Dee from Crystal Crafts with Dee this is my next project that I will be working on today this is an epoxy resin project so I did a video earlier on using UV resin so I think I'm a little bit more confident to try the epoxy resin so I've got all my bits and pieces out here and today I will be using my beautiful silicon mold that I got from DIY Digital Art they had so many different molds to choose from. It's just choosing was quite difficult. And I thought this was really interesting and um, I wanted to have a go at it. So you can make two of the top dream catchers and you've got two feathers and a star and a moon. Now, one thing I noticed with this too is that it's got those little bits there so that you can, um, it provides holes in your resin so you can hang them with jump rings. But there are none on the feathers, which I thought was quite interesting. So anyway, we'll see how we go with that. But really beautiful mold this is, nice and shiny, absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to have a go at that and see if it turns out. So first up, I've got everything ready to go. I have my gloves on, very, very important when you're using resin. I have my uh, sheet over top of my workbench so that that way it's protected and I have all my bits and pieces out. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd try a resin that is sort of readily available, um, like a brand that most people can get. This is from Kmart. Craft Epoxy Resin uh, was fairly inexpensive so I thought I'll have a go at that and see how that turns out. And I have my mold and I have some glitter that I got from Kmart as well and these gorgeous little screw top containers. They're all starts and stars and hearts and that sort of thing. So I've got a couple out. This one's got little moons. How cute is that? Really gorgeous. So I might try some of them. I have some beautiful crystal glitter chunks also from Kmart and they're in little screw top Containers, but I can get them out. I oh, can't get them out. So the, there's copper and silver, and this this green sort of oh, it's so pretty in, in resin. So I have a couple of them, and I don't know if I'll be using this or not, but um, I have some alcohol resin dyes also from Kmart, and then I have these beautiful, very fine powdered glitter vials that I got from just a discount store. I used a little bit of this in my UV resin video and I just loved it so I will be using some more of that. Really really pretty stuff. So I have all my stuff all set out ready to go. I have my mixers, I have my scale and 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 I have my lighter to pop any bubbles and last but not least I have this little kit here. Now you can get this sort of stuff anywhere um, online, uh, AliExpress, Amazon, everybody has them. I got this from Craft Online and it's just a little beginner's kit and it has some silicon jugs, mixing jugs. It's got some pipettes and all sorts of bits and pieces in there. So I'm going to try that out as well. So I have everything ready to go. And like I said, I don't know if I'll use everything, but it's there in case I want to. So I am going to clear my workspace off, keep my little glitters. I don't have any room. Put them over there. Uh, so what am I going to do? I might try some alcohol dye. In this one, you've got white, silver, gold, and black. I think for sun catchers, uh, I might just do sort of glittery in the main bit and then I might do a little bit of spot color in the feathers and the other two. So should I use gold or silver? Now you can add this to your clear resin and it will color it in. Or you can use the mica powders. Mica powders are, are probably better. So it looks like it really needs to mix up a bit, doesn't it? That's a gold. Um, 
Maybe silver, I reckon. Silver. Or gold. Uh, come on, decisions, decisions. All right, I'll try silver. So many possibilities. So I will do a little bit with the gold. Uh, my little flakes, I just think these are so cool. So I might put a little bit of gold flake in. So I've got that. And then I might put like in the feathers, I might do these bigger glitters, perhaps purple they're little stars so cute yeah, might do some moons as well now the bonus about you doing doing epoxy is that you don't have to rush you can sort of take your time and um, play around with it tweak it how you want it to look so I love that fact that you don't have that extra pressure and what I might do is do a little bit of blue glitter as well all right Cool. So first up, first up, we need to measure our epoxy. Get those guys out of the way. Now this little kit here, it has, I'm not sure what those are, but anyway, it's got popsicle sticks. And you've got some pipettes, which I will definitely be using because in this mold here, You've got um, these little areas, and I want to make sure I've got them all covered, but not sort of going over the top of my mold as I'm pouring it. So um, these pipettes are really good for these little small areas that you need to get into. So I've got those, and this was the whole reason why I bought this kit. I think this whole thing was like about twenty dollars. I know you can get into it somewhere. I wanted to show you this because it's like sticking to me. Okay. Now these are silicon oi, jugs. So little silicon mixing jugs. And you can use like hard plastic, that's fine. But what I love about the silicon is, is that not only is it easier to clean, but also you can pinch that and make the finer sort of pouring much much easier that's why I wanted these and do they have oh yeah they've got millimeters on the side there that's really good so they're 100 millimeter little jugs and they're in 20 millimeter increments that's a great size actually and there's one two three in there yep yeah, so we've got three of those and then I wanted these as well. So these are little, little mixing ones. And look how fine, like how pointy that bit is there. Again, you can squeeze it like that and you can really control how much silicon comes out and get those sort of little specialized areas. So really I probably don't need the pipettes because I can use that. And in here, I think there's four. One, two, three, four, five. So the idea is I will mix up the clear resin in here and then I will pour out uh, one of these for the glitter and one of these for the uh, silver alcohol dye. But that's why I was kind of waiting for these before I got started because I just like how you can really control how much resin comes out of there. And they're so easy to clean as well. So I'll need one of them. I'll just make sure that they're clean inside, which it looks like it is. Put all my little bits and pieces aside. Oh, we need a stick to mix it with. Go, okay, our mold can go over there. I think I need two of those and the rest can go. Now that glitter goes absolutely everywhere. And my little sticks and then we're going to bring over my scale which is also from Kmart so this is a big plug for Kmart isn't it 
Okay, so I have my craft resin and it says it has part A and part B. So 100 mils of the resin and 50 mils of hardener. And it has a plastic spatula, these gloves in it, and two measuring cups. So they will be the plastic ones. So everything you need to get started. This is a great way to just play around with it first and see if it's something you really like doing without having to spend lots and lots of money. Okay, so there's the part A. And... Ah. Two measuring cups, so they're the hard plastic. And instructions. A little spatula. And then part B, hardener. So that, that actually you can make quite a bit with that amount. Just to sort of play around with and see if it's something that you really want to do before you go spending heaps of money. So I'm just having a look at these instruction sheets. Now I have not opened this up before. I have no idea. Uh, safety instructions, avoid contact with eyes, wear eye protection, wear your gloves, avoid breathing the vapor. Um, first aid, first aid, what you will need, so it's got everything there. So this resin is a two to one resin mix, so when measuring out required amount you will need two parts of resin to one part hardener. So wear a pair of disposable gloves, lay down a plastic sheet, I have pour desired amount of epoxy resin into a measuring cup and allow it to settle for 10 seconds then you pour in the hardener so if you sort of use an example 30 mils of epoxy resin to 15 mils of hardener then you're going to mix it with the mixing stick for four minutes you do it very slowly because bubbles are not a good thing in your resin then you can mix in your dyes etc and then um, off you go now this says that it dries in 24 hours but it may not fully harden for up to 48 hours okay so we don't need instructions anymore let's just jump in and do this I'm going to weigh it it's just more exact apparently it might be for other people but I don't know for me okay so we have that and we're gonna go turn it on how much do we need um, I do have other molds, so usually you will have leftovers and you just, I'm going to pour it into some of my other molds for my sort of necklaces, that sort of thing. Um, so if I make, if I fill this up to hundred mils, then I need, uh, if I go 60 mils, 60, sorry, grams of resin and then 30 grams of hardener. Is that right? 60? 30. Yep. And that'll make 90 mils. 90 grams. So what do I want? 60. Okay, I'm just going to zero out my scale. It's got a low battery. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> okay. I got the safety seal off. Gee whiz, that was hard work. Okay. So I'm going to do 60 mils and I'm just going to um, try to get it as close as possible. So I'm just going to lean down and pour it in so I can sort of see it on a level. Uh, because they're not well marked, you can always mark it with a um, texture where the 60 mils is so much easier to see. But it's right there. Is it? Yes, so it's right there. Okay, so I am going to pour it in there. Oops, I knocked the camera over. That's 20, 40. Wow, it keeps going up. Don't you stop? Getting there. A little bit more. Okay, so that is 60 mils. Pop that bottle back, top back 
back on there. And then I'm going to put in the hardener, which is 30 mils. hardener and I'm going to go up to 90 and hopefully this oh that's around here up to 80 and that's 90 oh that's thinner than the other stuff and I'm going to make sure the lid's on there so I don't um, spill it. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just very gently stir it. Because you don't want to get any bubbles in there, which you will get it. But you're going to try to minimize. Stirring and stirring and stirring. so I'm going to keep going stirring this and then I'll jump back okay so I have mixed it for four minutes and I don't know if you can see there but there's some little bubbles in there that's okay I'm actually going to let it sit for a bit so that those bubbles can rise to the surface but in the meantime I'm just going to pour my little cups worth in here if I can get that get out of the way there we go so I'm just going to pour them in there and then um it'll be easier for the bubbles to kind of escape um, all three of them. So I'm just going to pour and you can just squeeze it like that. I love how you do that. And I'm just going to pour some in there. Pour some in the other one. And because I have a lot here, like that's a lot of resin I just mixed up. 90 mils, that's quite a lot. I do have other molds on standby just in case. Uh, I have leftovers which I know I will so I'll add a little bit of extra color in there okay so I've got my three little bits and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some of these um, little bits in there so I will just zoom you in a bit so you can see me mix them in so in we go that's better so the alcohol dye I'm going to use this one um, now because it is liquid you don't want to go to town with it because it will thin out your um, epoxy and will probably um, affect the curing time I'm not sure but that's kind of seems logical to me so I'm just going to give this a good shake and then I'm just going to add one or two drops I'd say one and then um, mix it up so less is more start off with a little bit you can add a little bit more if you wanted to Okay, it looked like it had kind of um, separated in there. So I'm just going to take the little lid off. These are quite cool. They had all different ones actually. They had these sort of metallics. Oh, that looks cool. Now I'm going to stir it around. That's neat. I like it all swirly. Hmm. Do I need another drop? Yeah, because it is opaque. I'm going to add... Oh, I'll add one more. Okay. I got two drops of silver in there and I'm sort of in front of my window so the lighting's not very good today so I'm just gonna mix that in and then I'll let it sort of sit for a bit just sort of let any air bubbles that are in there come up to the top make sure it's all mixed in Right, that looks pretty good so I'm going to leave that sit there and just let it sit and then for you can go up there 
this one here I'm gonna add some of this blue glitter this glitter is so super duper fine See if I can take the lid off without dumping it everywhere so it's super duper fine I'm just gonna add just a sprinkling to that And then I will stir it. Oops. So you can add the glitter to your resin now, or you can pour the resin and then add little bits of glitter. It's sort of whatever takes your fancy. I'm gonna add a little bit more because I kind of I want this to be clear, but I also want some areas where it's not so clear and I'm just gonna give that a bit of a stir looks pretty good there's one big air bubble right there okay well, that's cool because when it sort of dries it has a suspended um, suspended sort of flex in there it looks awesome and then I'll just pop him over there and then this one I might do I suppose I could try white and then have the color as like your glitters and stuff like that all right I'll do that so I'll just give this a bit of a shake and then I'm just going to add a couple of drops my shadow out of there. So I'm gonna go one, two. I'm gonna give it a bit of a stir. I'm just gonna use the glittery one that I had before because it doesn't really matter. I just love the swirly effect. How cool is that? Now to get the mold. Alright, so that looks reasonably good. So hopefully the two drops in that small little picture thingy won't be too much and make it too runny. I'm going to get my little pipettes to sort of get into those nooks and crannies. So all it is is a little plastic pipette um, and what you do is you squeeze the top, you put it in, squeeze the top and it sucks it up into the, um, the pipette. So really, really cool. But what I want to do is sort of try it without the pipettes and see how that works. Because after all, this is all one ginormous experiment. Now I've got my mold. And I'm just going to get these guys out of the way. Go. That's better. You can see what I'm doing. Okay, so just make sure there's nothing on there. There's a little bit of glitter, which I don't mind. That's okay. I'm going to start off with the feathers first because they're bigger and I can sort of get a feel for how quickly this pours. Uh, so what I'm going to do is probably pour a little bit of this one in. So what I like about having these little guys is you can mix up smaller batches and then if you sort of go, oh geez, I should have made up more of the glitter one, I still have a whole bunch in reserve there. So that's what I kind of like about about this. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in there. And I'm going to do the other feather. So that looks pretty cool. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white. I'm going to chuck it in there and then I'm going to add just a little bit of the silver because I want a little bit of like a, a swirl in there. Go. Now keep in mind that when you are placing the silicon in your molds, keep in mind that what you are seeing here is the back and I know that's obvious but when you're sort of putting things on it's hard to slip back into that mindset of oh that looks really good and then when you flip it over, it's like, oh, that didn't go through to the other side. So, um, yeah, it's, 
trying to remember that this is what you're looking at in the, the back. So I'm just going to sort of bring that in so it gets into those little finer details. And I'll move it up a bit so you can see. There we go. Just sort of making sure it gets into those little pointy bits. So that poured really easy, actually. Get around to here. And just making sure that's in those bits there. Make sure it's all on the edges and then I'm just going to get it like a light swirl. There we go, that's that one and then this one, same thing. Just poking them into those bits there so that it all gets to the edges. So that's actually gone in there really well. Okay, and then I'm just going to get a little bit of a swirly whirl. That looks great. Okay, and then I'm just going to add hmm, the feathers I might add. I reckon silver would look better. So I'm going to add some of these little crystal flakes that I got from. I need you can get these little teeny weeny spoons I need to get some of them because they're you can just sort of scoop it out like that it's really easy I'm just gonna kind of flick them through get both oops there's a big chunk there so you can just sort of plonk them in there and then you can move them around, space them out better with your little toothpick. So I like that. A little toothpick. And I'm going to kind of push them down a bit so you can see them from the front. So there's two ways you can do this. You can actually do uh, it in layers or you can just do it in one big pour like this. So if you do it in layers, make sure you leave plenty of time for it to cure and then go over the top with it. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'm going to go with just a few more just so I can see it from the back. Not too many. Okay. And then I'm going to add some stars. So these beautiful little stars, they're sort of outlined stars. And what I might do is um, just kind of individually pick them out without getting any resin on the rest of my stars. I guess I'll sort of go like that. That's a bit easier then I don't get resin in my stars. So that's one way of placing things individually is just put a little bit of resin on your toothpick and then picking it up that way and then you're not dumping a whole like the lob in there. That looks pretty good. I've got a couple more. Alright, that's looking good. Okay. Alright, I like how that's looking. And then all I'm going to do now is just pour a little bit of the clear resin over top. Just to sort of fill it up to the top. And I'm just going to look down and see how much more I need to put in. And hopefully I won't overfill it. 
Uh, it's cool. Alright, that looks good. Oops, sorry, wiping up the camera. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm just going to use my little toothpick just to make sure that looks up to there. So if you find that you think you've got it up to the top and you haven't, it's still like half full, uh, that's easy fix. You just let it um, harden and then um, add, like don't take it out of the mold. And just add more resin on top. That looks good. And I'm just going to wipe that bit off there with a baby wipe when I get a little bit closer. So that's my two little um, feathers. So what I'm going to do for the, I think the moon. Now see that the glitter is all sort of gone to the bottom. So I think with this sort of thing, you probably do need to um, do it in layers. And with him, get my hand out of the way, I'm just going to push that resin over. Into the corners so it can get around that little post. Okay, so because that's not very dark, I'm going to add a little bit of um, glitter. Uh, I can add a little bit of yellow glitter. And because I'm doing this after the fact, I'm just going to make sure that I've got a teeny bit in the lid. And then, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to splat it in there. Oh, went all over my finger. Okay, I'm just going to... Whoa. Yeah, so I've just added a big chunk and I'm just going to stir it around. That looks pretty awesome. So I do have bits like on the edge of the um, mold there. So I will definitely fix that up. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of my little crystals. Because I want it pretty glittery. So I want to keep it relatively simple because I've done this before. Bit more. Oops. A beautiful blackbird singing in the background. We have a little baby blackbird and the little the parents run around and take care of it. It's just so cute. So adding to some of these really super tiny purple stars. And then hopefully you can see them. Oh, there's a big star. So really it just, you can just go to town with these. So you can put like, um, you can put uh, like dried flowers in resin. You can put um, glitter, as you see there. I'm just going to fill this one up to the top. You can put um, glitter. You can put uh, polymer clay. You can really, there's so much you can do. 
with this. It's just so much fun. Get him out of there. And then let's do the star. I'm getting there. Um, star I will do in the silver. And then bring that around there so that it's in the corners. And so that when I demold it, it doesn't have any big pockets that the resin didn't get to. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to put mm, I've got little pink moons in it. They're so pretty. I'm just pouring it on the um, corner here just so I can pick them up individually and pop them in like that. Ah! Get out of there. That's the end of my um, toothpick. <laughs> I don't want that in there. Now, because I've put a bit of silver in this, those uh, moons aren't going to be super bright, uh, but that's okay. I don't mind. Like, parts of it will be clear and parts of it will be opaque. Because I don't really want too much in there. Okay. And then I'm just going to fill that up with... Uh, I might add a little bit of this one. So all my glitter, I don't know if you can see that, all the glitter has gone to the bottom. But that's okay. And I'm just going to fill her up. Alright, that looks good. Okay, now that I've practiced on those ones, uh, keep in mind that they are still liquid. <laughs> And they will spill if you pick it up and go push. Uh, and then this one, I'm just going to kind of go to town and just do bits everywhere. So I'll just stir this back up again. So it's more suspended. And then I'm just going to pour some of that in there. I reckon I could get away with it this way without the pipettes. Oh, we'll find out in a hurry. I think I will pipe it. I'll use a pipette, especially in the middle there. This is quite runny, which is good, but Ooh, that's neat. Got the real sort of thick glitter going in there. That's kind of cool. I just dumped that all over the mold. That's not exactly what I wanted to do. Right, so that's a bit rough. But that's used up all that, and I'm just going to go along and kind of make sure they all got in there. That looks kind of cool. Get those bits off there. Ooh, I don't know if that's coming up or not, but it looks kind of cool. Okay, and now I need to put some stuff in there. Um, I want to put these little flakes in. I'm just going to kind of plop them in there. Because these are sort of finer um, areas. couple more and then I'm just going to just go ahead and 
Otherwise, I'll be here all day and I'll be like, come on, come on, come on. All right. And then what I'm going to do is just pour the silver over top. I am going to try and do this without the um, pipette, so hopefully it works. Kind of hard to kind of get it to do it without going over kind of a bit of a lip. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Oops. Boy, am I messing this mold up. I poke it too much more. Just make sure everybody's in there. Going around there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to let it sit for a second and then I'm just going to double check that it's sort of full. So I'm just going to look at it from eye level. Okay, I think that's right. Fingers crossed. Right, so I will zoom you in so you can have a bit of a closer, oh, closer look. Sorry, I stepped on the tripod. And I'm knocking it over. I'll zoom you in. Okay, so you can sort of see the colors there that I've used. So hopefully that will work. Cool. All right, I'll zoom you back out again without knocking everything over. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour the rest of these little bits in other molds and then... Okay, so I have all finished. I've used up all the leftover bits of resin and this is sort of the aftermath and I had a bit of a cleanup because, man, I made the biggest mess. It was dripping everywhere. But anyway, we got to it. That's why we have a plastic sheet down or silicon. Actually, silicon sheets heaps better. So that close up is my dream catcher. And I'm going to let it sit there. And um, I have noticed with the, uh, the little uh, moon there, the glitter has sunk to the bottom, which will be the front of the mold, which is perfectly fine. But I think that turned out really, really good. Um, we'll sort of see how that happens. Plus, when I moved the silicon mold over, I actually kind of dunked it in some um, resin and hopefully the back of it doesn't stick to the plastic sheet. Time will tell. We'll see what happens because I can't move it because it'll spill everywhere. So anyway, that is that. And then the leftovers I poured into this resin mold. It's a coaster mold that I got from Kmart. So it's a good uh, chance to sort of try that out and see how that worked. And then I have some jewelry molds here, so I was playing around there with swirling some different bits and pieces in there. So they look pretty awesome. And then I wanted to sort of try out the bookmark mold that I use for the UV resin. And I've just done the paw one on the end there. And just added a little bit of glitter, just some clear and a tiny bit of white. And just sort of swirled it around. So we'll see how that turned out. And then I just had these tiny little dribs and drabs and I thought, hey, I might just pop some in this geographic pattern one. And um, when they sort of cure up, then I can use them to sort of make a stained glass coaster or something like that or a tray, you know, kind of make them look like tiles and sort of stained glass it effect like that. Anyway, we'll see what happens. So I've just sort of put those tiny little bits in there. So that's looking really, really good. So I'm going to leave them alone because if I bump them, they're going to spill everywhere. Sorry about the shaky camera. So it was a monumental effort to clean up my workspace. I made such a mess. It was unbelievable. But uh, baby wipes came to the rescue. And all I did was uh, wipe that um, plastic sheet off. And then I wiped each of those silicon cups out. And they're just sitting there drying and then I will pack them away in a Ziploc bag so that they will remain nice and shiny and dry and no dust. 
So it looks pretty good. So I'm going to get a plastic lid and I'm going to place it over top of those so that nothing falls into my resin while they're curing. So this will take 24 hours to cure. Um, so this time tomorrow I will take off the lid and have a look and try it out and see if it works. So anyway, we will be back. Hey! 